Hello, and welcome back to the Underground. Today, I present you with a newer analog horror series called Greylock. Without spoiling too much, the series is about military experiments gone wrong and how they affected the public. Greylock currently has five tapes in its series, each one being very creepy and disturbing with just a hint of paranormal in it. I did not expect much from this series considering that the total views on it are only around 15,000, but boy, was I wrong. The series does start a little slow, but by the end of this, I promise you will be hooked. But enough of me talking, let's jump right in. Video 001, back online. All right, here we go. Primary systems online. Meeting sequence complete. Emergency shutdown protocols disengaged. System was offline for time code 0106. Contact technician for assistance. Welcome to Simeo Dime USA Enhanced Access Operations. Please enter your clearance credentials. Error. These credentials are not recognized. Nice. Clearance credential requirement overridden. Administrator privileges granted. Welcome back, I'm on user ID. What would you like to do? Accessing archival storage form, GBS. Data extraction initiated. Data extraction, 10% complete. Data extraction, 80% complete. Data extraction complete. All data extracted to error. No Alright, we gotta go back and pause at some parts. Fatal error offline. Location morgue. Contact on site. Technician immediately. Simeodyne USA. Okay, I'm sure that's important. Other than that though, I really have no idea what happened in this video. The cameras looked like they were showing some kind of abandoned place. It looks like someone went there to extract data from some kind of computer or something. That was just the first video, so I'm sure whatever that was is going to become important later. But let's just jump into the next one. Video 002 to the mountain. All right, here we go. Dear believers, when men pursue evil, it is evil that they will find. Mark my words, there is no good that can come from the pursuit of darkness. Let me read to you, dear believer, the words of the late brilliant Charles Spurgeon, who discussed this at length in a sermon all the way back in 1864. He said, quote, Our adversary, the devil, goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We are taught by our Lord Jesus to pray. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. What we are taught to seek or shun in prayer, we should equally pursue or avoid in action. Okay, there's a street light. I thought that was a fire. Endeavor to avoid temptation, seeking to walk in the path of obedience so that we may never be guilty of tempting the devil to tempt us. We are not to enter the thicket in search of the lion. We may pay dear. Oh, and we arrived. Okay. Skip the whole car ride. Nice. This guy needs a better microphone on this camera. That looked like flesh, maybe? Okay, now that I got another look at it, it looks like blood and snow, maybe? Oh, <laughs> 
Wild. come face to face with the devil himself whether we intended to or not dear believer we are drawn to him by our own hearts in matthew chapter 15 verse 19 no don't stop it says, For out of the let's get out of here evil thoughts murder adultery sexual immorality theft false witness slander there is a shadow. Why, why are we moving so slow? Deep within our hearts, within our minds. Is that a person? A place most people don't even know exists within themselves. This is such a bad idea. The devil is going to call to those depths, dear believer. And though you may tremble before the beast, you should make it easier on yourself and accept what it is that he bestows upon you. <laughs> Dude, that scare really got me. Oh my god, that was really well done. <laughs> I thought he was just gonna turn the lights on and something was gonna be there. I didn't expect something to like slam into the car like that. I'm trying to listen back to it to see if I can understand what that voice in the background is saying, but I can only get like a few words here and there. So let me know in the comments if you guys have any clear understanding of what this could be saying. It is interesting. It does look like that this moment right now is flashing back with a past moment of maybe obviously everything's like red and there's like blood in the snow and stuff like that. So maybe whoever's recording this killed someone here and they came back and they're looking at it and it's like flashing back and forth. Yeah, Because if you take a look here, the scene does start flashing back and forth. And this is very clearly the same tree. Now what this is i'm not sure if someone did die here maybe it could be like part of a cross or some kind of memorial sign something like that whatever this is it's the last thing we see before they're back in the car upon you. and that sounds like someone was banging on the window there i still have no idea what's going on yet there's five videos here total i hope that by the end of all five i can some form somewhat of a story here but i have no idea what's going on Video 003, Orientation Protocols. So it looks like this video is going to be a little different. Starting off with warning, this video cassette is intended for the sole use of name Alexander Michael Marsh. So this tape is for someone specific and their name is Alexander. We got a name. Let's go. Also looks like some government symbols here. So maybe that'll tie into the first video where we got like some private files or something. But let's check it out. Also, just so that you're aware, I put on captions for this video. I'm not sure if the captions are by the author of the video, so there's a chance that they may be wrong, but I'm just putting them on so that we could kind of get a more clear understanding of what they're saying. But just be aware, some words could be wrong in them. Greetings, and welcome to the preconditional protocols and orientation video system provided by Unit 13 as part of the United States Army and Project okay. Stargate, created in partnership with Symbiodyne USA. Okay, tie into the first video. Unit 13. Congratulations on your selection as one of our testing candidates. Thank you. We luckily have a lot of questions, and yes. this video is designed to answer them all. 
First, let's go over some background information to provide you with the crucial context you'll need for a full understanding of what it is we're doing at Unit 13. We are sure you've heard plenty of rumors surrounding what it is that we do, but we are willing to bet that most everything you've heard is wrong. Being a highly confidential part of Project Stargate, which you've already been briefed on, Unit 13 studies a revolutionary and promising area of parapsychology. Thought forms. If you're unfamiliar with what thought forms are, that's okay. You're in the majority. So, what are thought forms? Through the ages, occultists and spiritualists, Tibetan monks to theosophists, have exercised the creation of what is sometimes referred to as a tulpa, otherwise known as a thought form. A thought form is the manifestation of a person's will, emotion, or other deeply psychologically energized state, into a semi-physical form, existing as not only an extension of the person, but as its own independent and sentient entity. Thought forms are also able to be witnessed and experienced by third parties, and are not limited solely to the person who developed them. Thought forms have been formed to serve as familiars, companions, or even friends to those who conjure them. According to key literature, thought forms can be intentionally formed by a single person or multiple people, though they can be unintentionally formed as well. But they are always manifested through the deep will and focus of a person in a considerably heightened state of connectivity with their own consciousness. Traditional thought forms can vary widely in their level of influence in the real world. While they usually take physical formations eventually, their earliest stages are more apparitional in nature, with brief manifestations, though most often remaining as an unseen essence, much like a phantom or a ghost. At this phase, thought forms and ghosts are very similar in a number of ways. Individuals can make contact with them through communication devices, such as a Ouija board or through EPP sessions, while the thought form may respond through moving objects, manipulating electronics, or even speaking words in short phrases. Due to their striking similarities, a current theory established by Unit 13 suggests that what we know as ghosts may not be as common as we once believed. Rather than a deceased person's energy being left behind after death, it's possible, and indeed likely, that these paranormal entities are actually thought forms that are unintentionally created by those individuals that the deceased has left behind, who spend inordinate amounts of time in deeply emotional states, where their mental capacity is largely occupied by a powerful focus on the departed individual. In other words, as these are the ideal conditions from which thought forms are born, people may very well create their own ghosts and hauntings. However, as more time and energy is invested into the development of the thought form, they begin to harness more influence on their environment, until eventually exhibiting a semi-permanent physical appearance, and, in due course, becoming as tangible as a living creature. This is just about halfway done and they dropped a ton of information uh, okay so thought forms are like ghosts that people conjure with their mind which is a pretty insane concept now what is the military doing with this though this is where unit 13's interest comes in we've sought to answer a very important question can thought forms be created in a manner that would benefit american society and help keep american citizens safe Unfortunately, the practice of intentionally creating a thought form by traditional methods would undoubtedly take years and years of devout mental training. So, Project Stargate has enlisted a world-renowned authority in thought forms, a man named Dr. Bernard Hayes, to oversee a number of the operations related to Unit 13's work. His participation has been invaluable and has brought fruitful results to the project. Due to Unit 13 and Simeodyne USA's combined efforts, bringing together some of the most prestigious minds in the world, specializing in the sciences of the human consciousness, with cutting-edge technology and engineering methods, we yeah, cutting edge. a groundbreaking, proprietary invention. Introducing the Thought Form Manifester. The Thought Form Manifester is able to create truly independent and self-sustaining Thought Form entities from the minds of select, willing participants. Being that they come from the deepest recesses of the human mind, thought forms can appear in virtually any configuration. They could look like a person, an object, an animal, or even something as abstract as the physical representation of an emotion. 
That being said, it's recommended to brace yourself before touring the Thought Forum chambers, as Thought Forums can also take on appearances that could be considered disturbing, like a creature one might see in a childhood nightmare. There's no reason to be afraid, however. All Thought Forms are docile by nature, and while they may look or behave in a frightening manner, and though they are capable of making physical contact, they pose no threat to humans. Once your session in the Thought Form Manifestor is completed, your Thought Form will be securely transported directly into a containment chamber. Thought Forms are unable to pass through the barrier of the Manifestor and will not be capable of causing you any issues. There are some very rare potential side effects that may result from your session. These side effects include increased tiredness, loss of balance, dizziness, insomnia, vomiting, episodes of temporary amnesia, and mild hallucinations. These side effects, if present, will clear up within 72 hours of your session, and are simply signs of your brain recalibrating to the real world. It is recommended you refrain from driving or operating heavy machinery for 72 hours after your session, even if you experience no side effects. None of these side effects should cause you any harm or overt stress, and former testing candidates who have experienced these side effects reported that they were very mild and merely a transient inconvenience. So Alexander has been chosen for Unit 13, and the people in Unit 13 use this machine that helps them create thought forms that they then trap in these boxes. Right off the bat, this is a bad idea, because if you got the brain to conjure up something really dark and disturbing, and it gets loose, and the fact that they could make physical contact, they're saying that it's like, oh, could we use this to help keep the American society safe. How though? What, like, what is, that intention doesn't seem legit to me. I feel like there's gotta be some other thing going on in the background that they're not informing, you know, the whole unit of. And these side effects too, that's a lot of pretty bad side effects. Probably shouldn't be happening. With all that out of the way, we are looking forward to your participation with unit 13 and your time in the thought form manifestor has been scheduled. However, there are several required mind exercises as a part of this video system that must be completed prior to your scheduled date in order to prime your consciousness and ensure the highest quality results. Okay. Please enter the video cassette labeled TF2, waking your subconscious now. This is the end of this tape. I'm locked in now. That was so weird. I have to see what comes of this manifestor machine because it ain't going to be anything good. Now I'm wondering though, if the first tape that we watched back online, if that takes place like long after these experiments happened, obviously they were turning a machine back online. Maybe they were turning like the whole computer that had all of this information back online to get it. I guess we'll see. Let's jump into the next one. Video 004 Unexpected Visitors Alright, this is the longest one by far, a total of 8 minutes. Here we go. Okay, immediately, somebody in the window back there. Oh wait, is that, that's a person on the left. Alright, if that person on the left was definitely looking out the window, they know that you are here, bro. Oh god. This guy's making so much noise. Am I the unexpected visitor?
turn the flashlight off. Oh my god, he's gonna climb in the window, isn't he? He's breaking in. Whoever this is. I wonder if this is the same person from the second video. Oh, bro, that is so loud. Oh, he's in. just kill that person? Oh, this definitely could be tying back to the second tape. I'd like to thank my producer, you, sir. My right writers, writers, my director, director, my friends, and you, the ordinary PP people who made me what I am today. Next Headroom premieres after moonlighting tomorrow. They did love me. PBS Emergency Broadcast System. We interrupt our current program at the request of the Massachusetts State Police. This is the emergency broadcast system. This is not a test. All normal broadcasting has been discontinued during the emergency. This station will broadcast official information, news, and instruction for Northern Berkshire County, Massachusetts, after the following tone. I always hate that noise. Oh my god, it's playing on the TV and this guy is just...
Bro, hold on. I kicked a bunch of stuff under my desk that I gotta fix now. Dude. Oh my god. Wow. That was incredible. <laughs> It's been a minute. It's been a minute since I got jump scared that bad. Oh my god. We gotta go through what just happened. So the first section of the video where somebody's breaking into the home seems to be from the perspective of these home invaders. There's a lot of them because the emergency broadcast said it was like almost 50 something break-ins and that was just what they had so far so they put that emergency broadcast out to kind of shelter yourself stay protected just in case that end portion i think this is actually from the perspective of just a homeowner maybe and they're kind of just you know they open their window and they're listening to the screams and then bam this hand comes out does not look human at all okay this yeah see this down here looks like a sleeve and this could be a glove that this person's wearing so if this is tying back to the whole thought form thing this could be like some monstrous thought form but it also just could be a person with gloves on which is i'm gonna say more likely <laughs> but then we get all these flashing images here See, now this face does look human, but a very melted. <laughs> they look human, but they definitely don't look normal. Okay, see, yeah, that face looked odd there. Oh, wow. We got one more video left in the series so far. And the thumbnail for this one looks the creepiest. Let's do it. Video 005. Not here, not now, not anymore. Interesting thing about this last video, it actually does have something in the description. Do you know what they did up there? These are the consequences. I guess maybe we'll find out what that means right now. Well, hello again, Tiffany. Oh, hi, Wanda. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. No dad this time. No, unfortunately, he couldn't get off work today. So I'm gonna have to call him on a payphone to let him know all the details as soon as we're done. <laughs> <laughs> He's excited to be a dad, huh? Oh, yes, he uh, certainly is. We, we both can't wait to be parents. Aw, and you said you've been together since high school, right? Yep. That is so sweet. And have you decided on a name for your baby boy yet? Yep, we're going with Max. Ooh, Max, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a nice, strong name. <laughs> That's why my fiancé wanted it so bad. He says it'll help make him strong right off the bat. That's a pretty good way of thinking about it. So let's see how strong little Max is so you can hurry up and make that call. Yes. Max. He's been moving around like crazy the past couple of weeks. So I think he's really strong. Strong enough to kick so hard I almost throw up sometimes, too. <laughs> Aw, what a wild boy. Activity is good. Yep. Okay, hopefully this isn't too cold. No, it's okay. Are you going to see anything in this video? Oh. Hello, baby. There he is. He's definitely a growing boy, that's for sure. And you're both looking really good. Oh, <laughs> I love hearing that. Let's get some measurements to see exactly, exactly how much he's grown. seen that before. Maybe something to do with the power. Oh. Okay. Did the baby just vanish? Um, this is a bit strange. What? What's strange? Nothing to worry about or anything. Just having some trouble finding the baby all of a sudden. <laughs> Maybe the machine messed up? Possibly. But I can still see everything else. It's just not picking up the baby for some reason. H has this ever happened before? Um, well, sometimes babies can move into certain positions that are hard to see. But, but, but you can't see my baby at all? I'm looking. Don't worry, he, he's definitely here. You know what? Why don't we just see if we can borrow another machine, okay? There has to be something wrong with this one. I'll be right back. Um... No, 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 no,
Something interesting to note here, if you do read that news article at the very end, it does say that Tiffany, the mother here, died from heartache because of her child disappearing like that. We, get, we gotta go back to the part where the baby disappeared real quick. Okay, perfect. I knew I saw something. Bizarre events leave Berkshires in terror. Authorities mute. Oh my god, I can't read what it says. Okay, I can read a little bit. Looks like it says days after the something unexpected events that left known mem number of people dead. And uh, I can't, I can't, I can't read it all. So there's this face, which does look like the same face that we saw at the end of the last video. We saw this face for a split second. It seems like whatever that news article is talking about might be referring to the whole home invasion thing that happened in the last episode. What I'm guessing it's also talking about is the baby disappearances. So they might be connected. I mean, they're obviously connected. It's the same series. They're going to be connected. But it seems like the people know that they might actually be connected. These incidents, a lot of weird stuff going on. Again, not sure how thought forms are involved in this, unless the thought forms are what did the home invasion in the last video. but. Thought forms having the power to make babies literally disappear out of a woman's stomach is kind of crazy. So that was the series Greylock so far. I gotta be honest, I'm completely hooked. The first video was a bit slow, but the more you watch, the more it ramps up. And honestly, it's kind of hard to find a connection between all five of these videos, but I think I got a little bit of a theory. We learned in the third video that there's an experiment going on about creating those thought forms. I believe that the reasoning for the events in tape four and five are because of a single thought form. I only think this because we saw the same face in both of those videos. So maybe this military experiment conjured up some kind of thought form that got out of hand. And right now, they don't have control over it. As far as tape two goes, I have no idea what happens in tape two. Still don't know how that connects to the story fully yet. And tape one seems like it was relaunching the computer system that might have information on all these experiments. So maybe somebody was trying to get this information and possibly share it to the public. Although that one's a bit of a stretch. Now, a small detail that I realized while editing, but I think is very important. In the description of the last video, I told you that it said, do you know what they did up there? These are the consequences. Now, this is a stretch, okay? But hear me out. Do you know what they did up there? For some reason, that makes me think the moon, moon landing. This seems to take place, I want to say, somewhere in the 80s, 90s. And the United States missions to the moon were around the late 60s, early 70s. So there's a chance that this could have something to do with us going to the moon. I also think this because at the end of the first section of the home invasion video, the home invader, after leaving the house, stares up and what does he point the camera at? the moon which seems so random but if you link it to the description the only description of a video that we have it does kind of line up a little bit how the moon ties into thought forms yeah i got nothing for you there I, I don't know but please let me know any theories that you have in the comments down below maybe you noticed something that i missed and also guys please go do me a huge favor if you enjoyed anything you saw in this video please go subscribe to the Greylock channel the link to the channel will be in the top of the description you can watch all the videos yourself and maybe do your own little investigation but i really want this series to continue and i think the series will only continue if the creator sees how much attention it's getting so let's try to run up those views and get it as much attention as possible this series is all also apparently by Rob Gavigan, who I didn't know about until I was recommended this analog horror series, but Rob Gavigan also makes horror related content. So his channel link will be in the description down below. Also big shout out to Emma for recommending me this series in my discord. You could join that in the link in the description as well. And also big shout out to my members. Thank you guys so much for all your support. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to hit 200k before the end of the year. And all right guys, thank you so much for your support. I love you guys to death and I will see you in the next one. Peace.